Everybody, welcome to episode 60 of the Joys of Games podcast. We are recording this episode on June 1st, Thursday evening, 2017. I am one of your hosts, Josh Brown. I am joined by the man who's ready to leave this country as soon as possible, Colin Wheeler. Hi, Colin. Hey, yeah, I'm I'm looking into making sure that whatever country I go to has a great internet connection. Mm, mm. Um, and what from what I hear, most developed countries have a much better uh, internet that's much cheaper than we do here in the United States. Weird how that works. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you're buying a house. Yeah, that I, is. I have a co-host on another show who's selling a house, and I have a co-host on this show who's buying a house. Like, there are houses coming and going all around me. It's overwhelming, Colin. Yeah. Uh, buying houses is an interesting process, for <laughs> sure. I have definitely heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going okay, though? Yeah. Um, should be trucking along by the end of the month. We should technically have the keys to the house, but hmm. we'll see what happens. Have you broken a champagne bottle on the door frame yet? No, but w- what we did do is we bought, once the day we closed, uh-huh. we bought a very nice bottle of wine. Yeah. Um, I've never spent, and this is not very much for wine, because wine gets super expensive. <laughs> I've never spent more than $30 on a bottle of wine. Okay, okay. But I, we bought a $30 bottle of wine. Ooh. Um, and then we also got a $20 bottle of sake, so. Ah, so you guys so, had a good night. Well, not, we haven't had it yet. Oh, oh, oh. Once, once we close, that's our celebration. We just sure. purchased it. It's just sitting there. Just waiting. Just waiting. That's exciting. Yeah. Has Yoshi got into it yet? Uh, Into the wine? No. Mm, probably the sake. Yeah, definitely. It's more of his alley. Yeah. He, he seems like a sake kind of guy. You know what's funny? Ever since it's gotten warmer, he has been the craziest <laughs> I have ever seen him. He's his, even crazier. His, his blood and, circulating a little bit better? I think so, because like he... He runs around like, you know, sometimes when cats get like catnip and they just go insane. Yeah. Yeah. They just chase everything. Right. He's doing that. He is running back and forth through the living room, jumping on the couch, jumping down the couch, going up the stairs, going down the stairs, like all over the place. And normally he's just a bum that sits on in his cage. (laughs) Since it's got warm, he's just like, I'm going everywhere. Do you chase him or you just hope that he comes back down? No, just just let him do his thing. Most of the time he ends up in our our uh our entryway has like a, a door that's right a uh, glass window that's right next to the door okay and he will just stare outside of it like a dog <laughs> he wants to go so bad yeah I, he scratches and yeah he's, he's, he's look he's at that crazy. beautiful sunshine i need to go just lay in it yeah roll around. I, I always feel bad for him too because like once i put him in the cage he scratches at the cage and like he'll get up he'll like somehow position his body to where he's on his like back legs, like he's standing up with his like claws up against the door, being like, "Take me out of here! Get me out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> Do they make lizard leashes where you could like possibly take him outside without him just beelining it forever? Yes, they do. Um, we have one. I think it's the one that was like gifted from us. Uh-huh. It, w- it was for an ad- adult bearded dragon, but I think it's too small for him because I tried putting it on him. Um, when he got older and like just recently and he I can't get it around his his arm. So I'm going to look into getting a little bit bigger one. But I have taken him outside before. And this was during the like, oh, I want to say it was in January or February. It was a little bit colder outside. Uh-huh. And he was so freaked out of his mind, like <laughs> not not in a good way. And I, in fact, it scared me so much. I didn't even want to pick him up. I ended up getting like Hayden grabbing like a little a box to put him in because when beer dragons are scared or they feel like they need to defend themselves, they'll puff out their cheeks. Mm. And he looked like a freaking blowfish. Like, <laughs> it was scary. I'm like, holy crap, is he going to bite? And he didn't, but like, sure. it scared me. And I think it scared him to death because like, after that hours, he was just like in shock in his cage after we put him back for a while. So. Was it just overstimulation? I think so. And I was reading about it like, apparently when it's cold, it's one thing. And then also... Um, if there's a shadow above their head, they automatically go into like panic mode because uh, beard dragons naturally get eaten by birds and stuff. Sure. And when I was quote unquote walking him, obviously I was towering over him, which is a giant shadow. <laughs> so. Fair enough. So the next time we do it, um, I'll definitely be a little bit more sensitive about not being a giant shadow over sure. him. 
But then again, if he if it's, he just feels that like hot, warm sidewalk, you know, under his flesh, like he might not even care. Yeah, it's like, he you might, know what? If I'm getting eaten today, it's the best day ever. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Good old Yoshi. Uh, Colin, this has been an episode you've been waiting for for a long time now. Oh yeah, for a whole year. Whole year we've been waiting for this. This is our annual E3 prediction episode. Um, last year we were stellar at predicting things. I implore everybody to go back and listen to how many awesome things that we were correct with. Um, I don't even remember them all. There's so many of them, Colin. Yeah, like all of them, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Them. yeah. Just, just saying. We pretty much like leaked E3 before it happened. You know, yeah. Nobody believed that it was an actual leak until it happened. So, Insider knowledge. Um, so if it happens again this year, you've at least been warned that uh, everything that we may say here tonight will probably be announced in the coming weeks at E3. So just letting you know. Uh, Colin, let's start with Microsoft, shall we? Yeah, Microsoft. Microsoft is, um, this year is is pretty important for them, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, we know the Scorpio is going to be completely unveiled. um, And they're going to lead off the show with that because that's what everybody is wondering about. That's that's the big question. (laughs) They can't make people wait. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it will be released at starting at three ninety nine mm. for the base model, um, which will have very limited storage, probably like five hundred gigabytes of storage, and then they'll have a deluxe model, which will be four ninety nine, and that'll have a two terabyte storage. Mm. Okay. It will be, and it will be called the Xbox Four K. That almost makes too much sense. Um, for my Scorpio prediction. I just said that it's going to be more expensive than people want or expect. Mm. Like, I know everybody is clamoring for, like, that three ninety nine price point, like, even if it's a lower storage capacity. I just don't know if they could hit that. And I, I want them to. I just don't know if they can, if they're willing to, like, put, leave that money on the table. Like, I think... You three forty nine or or I'm sorry, four forty nine or four ninety nine is probably more likely. Yeah. So sucks, do you think they're going to but... do multiple SKUs though? No. I, no. No, because. Well, okay. Here's the thing. Yes, if. Yes, if. One of my other predictions is that Scorpio is a new system. It's not an upgraded Xbox One. It's their next console. That's one of my that's my prediction. That it's going to be that. And everything for Xbox One will still be backwards compatible and blah 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 blah, but they're not going to position it to be the PS4 Pro type of upgrade, that they're going to position it to be this is our new thing. Hmm. Look how more powerful it is. Um, so if they go that route, then I could see different different skews. But if they go the route that they've kind of been leaning towards already of it being just an upgraded Xbox One, then I think they need to stick with one SKU because you already have like the Xbox One S and that has different SKUs. And I, the more SKUs, the, the more complicated it gets for consumers. I agree. Yeah. I think it just helps having that like flashy marky thing starting at three ninety nine. <laughs> no, I agree, I, and and that would be great and like pipe dream, perfect. But I I just don't know if they're gonna do it. That's fair. I think they want to, but they really like money. I think for the longest time when they announced it, I was I was touting that it was gonna be four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's possible if they'd be smart if they take a loss on it, but. Yeah. Who knows? I you know. Agree. Microsoft is playing their own game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else you got? Um, so I think that 343 is going to come out. They're not going to show Halo 6 because they've already confirmed that they're not going to show it at E3. But I think they are going to show off uh, updates to the Master Chief Collection in Halo 5. And it'll have 4K updated visuals to go along with the Scorpio. Mm, okay, okay. Um, I don't know how they would demo that online because obviously most people are not streaming it via 4K. But the idea that like these games that came out, the important games that came out um, 
years and years ago are getting updates with this power of Scorpio, I think is kind of cool. Sure. Cool idea. So <sighs> regarding Halo, obviously we know there's not going to be a Halo six, but I think this is the year that we get a ODST remake. ODST, huh? Yep. Even though it's the Halo 3's 10th anniversary? Don't care. All right. That's fair. Because ODST was a Halo 3 ODST. Right. So, look. They may do a Halo 3, whatever. I don't even care. I want an ODST, Colin. I would love an ODST 2. Like, if they use the same Halo 5 engine and just do, like, a side story similar to what they did between 3 and Reach. Yeah. That's, like, just a super quick thing. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'd be okay with like a little spin-off game that, you know, holds up between 5 and 6. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Um, do you have anything else Halo related? Not Halo, no. Okay. What else you got? Um, I think there's going to be a remastered Fable trilogy, similar mm-hmm. to the Master Chief collection. Mm-hmm. Um, Fable 2 and 3 are, have been backwards compatible for quite a long time, but we still have not seen Fable Anniversary being backwards compatible. Um, if you remember, that was a late Xbox 360 game. It came out the same year as the Xbox One. Um, so not a lot of people played it. And I think they want to keep that IP alive. Yeah. Um, and I think this is a good way to do it. And it, it'll have a Scorpio 4K visuals as well. Hmm. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to predict that Crackdown is the biggest and most exciting game that they show off during their conference. And that's unfortunate. You think it's gonna one that's gonna get the most buzz, or just like that's what they're positioning as? That's what the positioning is. Like this is our headline game. Mm, okay. Which is not gonna make people happy. <sighs> yeah. And people are excited for Crackdown, but I don't think people are like that's going to win the show type of like sh- reveal of Crackdown. You know, and yeah. Microsoft's gonna just like go all in on it. Yeah, they definitely would have to, like, for someone, for it to get really, like, the buzz that they're wanting, I guess the popular they're wanting, like, they really need to impress people with new types of gameplay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have a great sequel, but if you can change the the gameplay up um, and have, like, specific modes and specific, like, I don't know, just something, something to really wow that's something unique. That's not just it's not just like Crackdown one, but like way better, like bigger and like badder, you know, just it has to be like significantly different in order for it to wow people. And then Mm -hmm. if you get the press on board, then more people will get excited about it. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right about that. Um, And it's just to me, Crackdown has just always been that like secondary ip like it's never been that like key title that when there's a new iteration i i'd have to get it day one type of thing it's more like well there's nothing else to play i'll pick it up yeah kind of like like the dead rising games that's kind of how i feel about that right yeah i I don't think i kept going out on a limb on that prediction but i just like people want microsoft to wow everybody and i nothing i've seen or heard or anything makes me even remotely think that they have something up their sleeves that they're hiding that's going to just knock people's socks off. Yeah. Game-wise. Like, no big surprises, I don't think. I hope I hope we get something. I really do. I, I, I do, too. I just, I see them just, because they've been so quiet about Crackdown them gearing Crackdown to be, like, their big franchise that they lean on. Like, they they really love Sea of Thieves, but they are smart enough to know that they can't, like, hinge their entire press conference um, game-wise around Sea of Thieves. And Crackdown would be, like, a good game to show off what the Scorpio can do power-wise. Why? I don't think Sea of Thieves would show that same type of power. No. Um... So I think like they're they're just going to just lean into the crackdown thing and and probably lean into it too much, <sighs> which sucks. Yeah, I. So one of the things you're saying is that you don't think there's going to be any surprises. One of my predictions is I think they are going to show off a new a brand new IP, and the IP is going to be very RPG heavy. 
Yeah. Hmm. But but I know it's a very ambiguous guess, but I feel like Phil Spencer said that they kind of want to fill out a pro portfolio of specific games, and I feel like we haven't really seen any um, first party RPGs on Xbox yet. Yeah. So. <sighs> Hmm. All right. Well, what else do you got? Uh, I think there will be a 2D Battletoads game. Really? Yeah. I think there'll be like a uh, similar to uh, when they did. Uh, I'm trying to think what that game was called. Kind of like a Castle Crasher style game, and then that's kind of what Battletoads was to begin with, but like very like stylized like that. Right. Um, I also think that Cuphead will finally get a release date. Mm. Uh, and I think it will be in August. Okay. Uh, probably mid August is what I'm thinking. Uh, he, I, here's I what... have Cup da- Cuphead announced as a summer release as well. Okay. I'm trying to like regenerate like the, the summer of arcade type of feel, but maybe not using the wording, but tricking people into thinking of something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, here's a weird one. I think that they, that Xbox will be the one to unveil Devil May Cry 5. Because I really I don't feel like they have like a hack and slash type game either. And I don't know why. I just feel like Capcom would just be weird enough to go with Microsoft on that one. Like, granted, I don't think it'll be an exclusive, but I think it'll be, like, unveiled at their press conference. Yeah. Devil May Cry 5, huh? Yeah. They're going back to the numbered games? Yeah, because people are dumb and they hated the DMC game because he had black hair. But I don't think going back to 5 would make sense. I mean, I'm just saying, like, whatever... It doesn't have to be Devil May Cry 5, but I think it'll be back to the old Dante and not the reboot, rebooted Dante that they did. What if they just announced DMC 2 and announced that he has uh, um, received a makeover and has dyed his hair? Well, if anybody played DMC to the end, spoiler alert, he has a silver hair at the end. Right. So he should have it. <laughs> sure, should. But, like, maybe people would be like, well, you know, maybe it didn't last. And they're like, no, 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 we're making sure that this is a for sure thing. Yeah, I, I just I have a feeling. I think I just feel like it's time to bring that back. Yeah, that well, series back. It'd be fun. I'd play it. Yeah, I love that. It's one of my favorite series. So. Yeah. Um, and the last Microsoft one I have is a new Banjo-Kazooie game. Ooh, you think it's time, huh? I think so. <sighs> maybe maybe I could see it people were excited uh, with ukulele and that whole genre again so I-, I think that game coming out probably put some good will towards a new Banjo-Kazooie game yep that's possible I like that uh, my last Xbox prediction this is a huge one Colin get ready oh, oh yeah hold on to your butts okay Oculus support or a new Oculus headset is announced slash revealed to be compatible with the Scorpio. What do you think the price is going to be on that? <laughs> I'm not saying it uh, like just the VR headset. Yeah, like you said, a new Oculus uh, one that maybe is dumbed down to like similar specs to like the PSVR. Mm-hmm. So it would, you know, run off of the Xbox instead of, like, a high-end PC type thing. Even though they're going to posi- position the Scorpio to be, like, similar to a high-end PC, we all know it's not going to be. Um, 500. Okay. Maybe I, I, they might get competitive and try to go the 400, like, PSVR. Um, but it will be, like, they will make sure that it's well known that it's only compatible with the Scorpio and not, like, with your current xbox one whatever version you have which will be a selling point for the new system hmm interesting yeah 
I I don't know. Like I feel like I feel like they've been pretty gun shy about talking anything VR. So I know. I know. Hmm. 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 It may not be a smart business move, but I don't know. I just I I can't imagine Xbox or Microsoft is just sitting back and just letting it happen all around them and not wanting to get in on it. You know? Yeah. I think I don't think I don't think it'll be as big a reveal as you say it is. I think it might be like a sizzle real thing, like look at all the things a Scorpio can do. Yeah. Including VR headsets. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, but, uh, we'll see. I, I think that might be like they'll start with a Scorpio, then they'll do a bunch of games and blah 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 blah, and then they'll, like that'll be like their one more thing at the end. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That would be that would be a very like buzzworthy moment because yeah. yeah. Honestly, like I have a PC that can run VR, but I just don't want to mess with all the crap that comes with PC gaming. Sure. And then on top of it, having to mess with another thing to mess right. with on yeah. top of messing with something <laughs> versus plug and play is much nicer. Mm-hmm. So, so and, and, you know, like that Oculus store is already, you know, established with like a bunch of games and stuff that like, whereas the PSVR is hindered because like games have to be specifically developed for the PSVR. Oculus can come in with their already fairly full library of games. Microsoft, that's a. That's a coup for Microsoft. So, hmm. also, I think we might hear something about what's next for Minecraft. Oh, like a new iteration. Even if it's just like a hint or something, like they've spent too much money on Minecraft to just sit back idly and sell it to other companies to put on their platforms. But they still make so much money. I know, and I'm not They're saying like. They're going to like abandon what Minecraft is, but I just think that we'll see or hear or get hinted at maybe what's to come for that franchise. It's got to be a Connect game, right? It'd have to be. <laughs> I mean, what if they were demoing Minecraft in Oculus VR for the Scorpio? Well, they do have. They do already have that. They have Minecraft VR in Oculus right now. Right. But you but show yeah, that. Yeah, Scorpio. That yeah, cool. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That would be really neat. That's all I got for Xbox, though. I I want big things for Microsoft. Like I want to just sit back and be like, "Wow, they killed it." Yeah. <sighs> they worry me. <laughs> they scare me a lot. Um, I think people get over excited for Microsoft. Um, the last couple of years, like they haven't really lived up to what people have wanted from their E3 presentations. Yeah, I feel like that year when they announced, I think it was the year after the Xbox One came out. That was just like one of the best E3s they had. They had like Scalebound. They showed off. Uh, they showed off Crackdown. They showed off. There's a button. I think that's the year Cuphead got announced too. Like there's a lot of good stuff. Ori and the Blind Forest got announced then. Like. That was, like, their best E3 during this generation so far. Yeah. And, like, last year was good, but then, like, Sony came and just, like, blew it out of the water with all these, like, crazy things like Spider-Man and God of War and all the VR stuff. Like, it was just yeah nuts. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Xbox uh, conference is Sunday? Yeah, Sunday is 6 p.m. Pacific. 6 p.m. Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so that should be fun. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, switch over to PlayStation, shall we? Yeah. What do you have for PlayStation, Colin? Uh, I think they're going to open the show with a new Spider-Man trailer, and they're actually going to give uh, they're going to give it a twenty uh, holiday twenty eighteen release date. I think we will get release dates or at least windows for all the big games that they showed off last year, which are Spider-Man, God of War, and Days Gone. What about uh, Death Stranding? No. no, 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 no. <laughs> is that even a game, or no. is this just like a social experiment that's that could be doing? That's a, that's a, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, that, that's not a game, Colin. Mm-hmm. I, I would be surprised if that is even the name of whatever that is by the time it releases. To be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I think all the other ones, we're going to get at least time frames of when to expect them. I think Days Gone is their big um, holiday game this year. Oh, really? You think it's that far along? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um, and then I think we'll see God of War in the first... Uh, first half of next year. Kind of like uh, how Horizon... Yeah. Around that time frame. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah they'll position it around Red Dead Redemption 2, I think. You know? So it's not oh, too yeah. close to mm-hmm. it. Um, and then... Yeah, Spider-Man, I think, is late next year. But I would love to be pleasantly surprised with all of them. And they say, 2017 across the board. Let's do this. That would be so overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> no! <laughs> Speaking of which, I've been uh, playing God of War 3 Remastered lately. Yeah? Yeah. How's it hold up? I really enjoy that game, Colin. I love playing as Kratos. Like, that's uh, just a dumb game, but it has... Very fulfilling gameplay mechanics. The combat is so good in those games. Yeah, like it's most... like the DMC games. Like that's what I'm it saying. Just like feels good. It's a it's a Western hack and slash that actually yeah. feels good. Yeah, which is very hard to accomplish. Swinging those blades around, man, are just ah, oh, yeah, so good. I mean, you just get past Kratos screaming all the time, and it's uh, it's a joy to play for sure. <laughs> Speaking of God of War. Yeah, um, I think they're going to re- release a God of War PS4 collection, um, similar to what they did with PS3. Um, sure, but it'll it'll include uh, one, two, and three, mm-hmm. the PSP games, and or one one and two in the PSP games because three is still or is obviously already out. Right. So what I think about... they want to get people to like build up to the next the, the new game basically. What about the last God of War game that came out? Uh, oh ascension oh yeah. i don't know about that one i don't i don't think so i think they'll leave that aside mm, it was a is, good game is it actually like uh it takes place in the timeline it does it okay yeah. i thought it was just like a weird spin off no thing. no 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 it, it slides right into that timeline is it after three no okay it's like between one and two i think or between two and three or maybe it's a prequel to all of them Okay, so maybe they'll not include the PSP ones, cause, and then they'll just do the rest of them. Well, the PSP ones are cano- canonical as well. Mm. All of them fit into a specific timeline. Interesting. It's crazy to think about, but like... It's actually Kratos, not yeah. crazy. <laughs> Funny. Uh, no, like, they, they, <laughs> none of them are, like, just weird spinoffs that, like, they're all canon to the storyline. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Well, maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll do the exact same thing they did with the PS3 where they release them separately, like two sets separately, but mm, mm. just feel like it would make more sense to just have them all in one. Sure. So. I'd like that. I'd play those again. Yep. Um, I think that Bloodborne 2 will be announced. Hmm. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it's time. I think that yeah, game sold very, very, very well. Like, way more than FromSoft thought. And same with Sony. Yeah. It's going to sell. So. Well, especially with, like, how good Neo did earlier this year. Right. You know, surprisingly. Like, with no buildup or fanfare at all. Yep. Bloodborne 2 would definitely do well. For sure. I like that. Um, Evil Within 2 will be revealed uh, at the conference. And it will have a PS VR mode. Ha <laughs> ha, I put the same thing. Did you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That seems like a no-brainer. Yep. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Um yeah, they'll go the route of Resident Evil 7 and and which you know, again, if Microsoft does, you know, Oculus, right? Like Evil Within, like that's a Bethesda, you know, title, like they could they could do it for each one, you know. Right. Um, wouldn't be past Bethesda at all to do something like that. So, yeah, I, I totally anticipate that for sure. Um, speaking of PSVR, mm-hmm. Dreams is now a full-on PSVR game. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. It it makes sense in so many different ways. Yeah. That's why we haven't seen much from it. I think that's why they went back and they kind of restructured it. I think it's going to be psvr exclusive like you're not going to be able to play it without vr and i think that will actually make the game do better 
Yeah, I agree. Because, like, looking at just the trailers and them trying to explain it, they're like, it's an experience. I'm like, that does not sound fun to me at no. all. No. But if I was playing it in VR, like, it sounds a million times more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's where I want my experiences to be. Yeah. I, I want the TV screen to be for dumb, fun games, and then I want the experiences to be inside that stupid headset. Yeah, because it's like you're manipulating things and almost you're almost like a puppet master yeah, basically. Yeah. And how cool would that be with the the little you know, move controllers and uh -huh. stuff? Mm-hmm. Yep. That'd be really cool. Um Spyro. Yeah. Getting a reboot slash remake treatment a la Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, we got a lot of uh community answers wanting that that's yeah. interesting i didn't really i don't know why i never thought of that after crash got announced yeah but i would be a million times more excited for that than i would for crash bandicoot yeah and i think uh, that if they work closely with activision on this may lead into some sort of skylanders reboot um the following year 2018 do you think it'll actually have the toys? Do you think it's just going to be like the Netflix Hard Skylander to say. stuff? Hard okay. to say, yeah. But I think they need to go back to the roots. Um, Spyro is a, a important character to PlayStation. Sure. And, uh, you know, Skylanders has gotten away from Spyro the last few games. So, um, yeah, I, th I think they need to go back and revisit, you know, the origins of, of Spyro. And then that might transition into... How Spyro went from like the Spyro games to Spyro of Skylanders, and what that transition was, which I think like a new reboot of Skylanders could do. You know, that would be really cool. I would yeah. love that. Yeah, go back to what made Skylanders really awesome in the first place, which was dragons. Every element had a different dragon. That's right. They don't do dragons anymore, Colin. Nothing's cooler than dragons. I'm just no, saying. It's just true. But they need to get Crash out of the way and, and all that stuff. But I think Spyro's next on deck. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would love that. Yeah. Um, I think that the Destiny 2 beta will begin right after the press conference. Um, and it'll be one week ahead of Xbox One. <laughs> Good old Destiny betas. Yep. Um, like that games company's new game will be revealed. Ooh. PS exclusive? No. Okay. But I think it'll be like a... I don't know if it'll be exclusive. Maybe like a timed exclusive. Kind of like how Inside was on Xbox for like a couple... Sure. ...weeks. Because they're no longer... Um, yeah, they're the no longer... Done. Yeah, their deal with Sony's done. And I know they wanted to go third party, so... Or is this just like a good faith, like, you treated us well for three games, like, we'll give you this reveal type of thing? Yeah, and I think Sony would want to do that anyway, just because, like... You know, the people at Sony love that company. Right. And everything well, they do. They supported them for how long did Journey take to come out? Like, just forever. Several years, yeah. Yeah. Sony has a remarkable ability to trick people into thinking that games are exclusive to their console without ever saying anything remotely close to the words, this game is exclusive to this console. Yep. Like, with Destiny release, console. there were people out there that were 100% 100% convinced that that was a PlayStation exclusive. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. And that's just oh, because yeah. they threw so much marketing at it individually, you know? Yeah, I just... I think it's just really smart how they do their marketing. And I don't yeah. even... You know, I, I feel like, honestly... Honestly, I feel like Microsoft actually does more marketing on their big games than Sony does. But I feel like Sony has this just ongoing amount of good faith among gamers that like they just latch on to their marketing and like i guess um what is it i guess uh, are more accepting of it i guess mm -hmm. i don't know how else to explain it they're sure. just like they're more open-minded they're like oh yeah. that game has to be on playstation because it's gonna be it's gonna be way better on playstation right and then they tell their friends and their friends tell their friends and et cetera, et cetera. yeah it's just a collective mind share at this point yeah helps to be the leader <laughs> <laughs> it really does um i think shadow of tomb raider which is the third uh uh what is it crystal dynamics is that the yep. company mm -hmm. uh will be unveiled 
on Sony's stage as well, and it will have exclusive PS4 content. Awesome. I forgot about that game. Yeah, I think after them teaming up with Microsoft, I don't think Square Enix was too happy about the results of that. So yeah, um, I think they'll go with Sony this time around. Yep. Um, I have one wild, crazy, or actually two wild and crazy predictions. Good, because I got a couple. Are you ready for this? Yeah. A new handheld will be announced mm. that is cost-effective and is designed specifically for remote play via PS4 and Mind. And here's my other one. Here's my other bombshell. They're calling it Vita 2. No. no. They're going to call it the, the PlayStation Go. Okay. But, okay. but that's not the, the PlayStation that's not Switch. The, the bombshell. The bombshell okay. is yeah. the very, very end of their press conference they're going to tease the PS5. <laughs> oh, that would be so good. Uh, what way can they get people to not buy a Scorpio? <laughs> Tell them that they have something else on the way also. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that would be crazy. Yeah. It's just an arms race at this point. It's fantastic. And the best part of it is, like, as Nintendo fans that you and I are, like, we could sit back and still enjoy, like, our Nintendo things and then just, like, watch Sony and Microsoft, like, duel it out, like, to the best of their abilities and, like, Nintendo not even care at all about anything that's going on. Right. It's so good. <laughs> like, it's a win-win situation for everybody involved, except I... Sony and Microsoft are, like, you know, like, competing to not lose the most money, but consumer-wise, awesome. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that Nintendo does its own thing because I never have to worry about them trying to be like anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be impossible to keep up with. Yeah. Um, here we go. We're going to get a full on gameplay included Last of Us 2 trailer. Oh, really? Yep. I think they're okay. farther along than they want us to think. Hmm. I think it's still probably like a early 2019 game but they have they have something to show they're going to make sure that we remember that it's on the back burners um new sucker punch game is announced oh yeah i totally forgot about them what's it going to be colin ooh i don't know what could it be another I infamous th- game you think they're going to do another Infamous? Really? I think it's going to be Infamous 3, and it's going to pick up um, with Cole and everything that happened after 2. See, I did not like Cole. Like, no. I really like the new protagonist from um, Second Son. Delson. Personally. Yeah. I-, I just think that, like, that story wasn't done, and Second Son didn't... I mean, they kind of touched on it, and I think, like, a game in between the two could, to bridge them together would be awesome. Yeah, those games are excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent games. So I, I would be super happy about that. And along with that, they're also going to announce that 1 and 2 are getting remakes for the PS4. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <sighs> ready for a crazy prediction? I'm ready for it. Okay. The game that no one thought would ever happen again. And they might change the name, or they might keep the name for comedic nostalgia effect. But I think it's time that Sony dips into their roster of characters once again and does PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. (laughs) I mean, with the new Kratos, with Alloy, with... Uh, you know, they could throw in Spider-Man, you know, if they wanted. Like, I just, I I just want them just to, just for the sake of them proving to everybody that, like, nobody knows anything in this business, just to have fun with it. Just to say, hey, give us another shot at this. I, PlayStation, uh, was it All, All Stars? Was yeah. it called Battle Royale as well? All-Stars Battle Royale. PlayStation feel, All-Stars Battle Royale. 
I played that game and it was fun. Yeah. It wasn't bad by any means. No. It's just it was just trying too hard to be like Smash. Yeah. And it wasn't its own thing. So I would like for it to kind of try to do its own thing more so. Sure. That'd be really funny if they did that though. That'd be that would be something that nobody would expect. You know, Joel and Ellie from Last of Us, you know, Nathan Drake oh again. Gosh. Like, uh. they could just go deeper into <laughs> their, like, last several years of games and just just totally have so much fun with it. That would be cool. Ratchet and Clank and you know, I would love Crash. it to be a third-person shooter because I think that would be really cool. <laughs> like an Overwatch, but with, like, all their oh. all their roster of characters. Right, yeah. I think that would be really funny. Yeah. That's what I got for PlayStation. That's a good one. I like that one. I just, I, yeah. I, it would just be fun. It would be fun. You know? Something lighthearted. Because they're so story heavy in everything that they're doing these days. You know, just throw something out there just to lighten it up a little bit. Right. Uh, you have anything else for PlayStation? No, that was it. Cool. Let's get to uh, what everyone's been waiting for. Nintendo. Oh yeah. I have a prediction about Nintendo's online service, Colin. Yeah, go for it. I predict that the online service will start in 2018. <laughs> I predict that it will be priced at twenty dollars for a year long no. subscription. No, that'd be too good to be true. And that they will include a classic game uh Netflix style service where you could play old classic quote unquote virtual console. Nintendo games that have new updated online leaderboards, um, and that's all part of your uh, year-long subscription. Uh, that's too smart. I don't think they'll do it. <sighs> yeah, you're right. That's you should uh, rethink these things before you say them aloud. That's silly. Wow. Yeah, I'm stupid, 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 <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Dude, are, are you kidding me, Nintendo? Like, they're doing what people wanted them to do. <sighs> I know. They're doing what people were begging them to do. Yeah. It's weird to me that, like, they actually took the feedback of everybody and changed it. Yeah. Because in Japan, I think it's like they announced that it was going to be like 30 bucks or something. Yeah. And everyone's like, that's too much. Uh, well, the conversion rate, like, put it at like 24 or 25 or something like that. Yeah. But uh, 20 bucks is is great, and the yeah. fact that you'll have access to ongoing amount of retro games is awesome. Yep. Uh, the I still think the online portion of it is still kind of weird. Like, you have to use yeah. your cell phone. But, like, honestly, like, I can get over that pretty quickly. Right. Um, uh, but, yeah. Like, well, here's the thing. Like, you got to think about, like, it's still kind of a portable device. Yeah. So, like, even if, like, you're on a Wi-Fi spot and you're able to play online matches, adding voice communication and voice chat to that game that you're already using Wi-Fi on, like a public space or something, could possibly be tricky, but your phone is much more capable of running a, a, a chat program to talk, to communicate while you're playing a game on Wi-Fi. I think they're doing it to prevent disrupting the online services of the game you're playing yeah absolutely that's the case i have a friend who he is a big smash brother guy he goes to like tournaments and stuff and we were talking about today and he said that like he's actually really happy that they separated the voice chat because Lag. the the switch is you know they're designed to be portable so it's yeah. not ultra powerful so if you tap into the networking um and include voice chat it's mm-hmm. going to create a major amount of latency yeah for yeah. for the especially the hardcore people right so he's happy that like they're separating it because like he's gonna play smash and arms online right and it won't be bogged down right by voice chat i mean in this day and age like everybody has smartphones like it's not asking too much for people right to have a smartphone while you're playing your switch because that's that's pretty much going to be happening no matter what you know yeah and it also prevents like children from hearing because that's a, that's yeah. one of their main concerns that's why voice chat's never been a thing is because they're yeah. worried about kids logging online and hearing adults scream obscenities like little right. children themselves yep um most kids don't have a smartphone and the ones that do have restrictions on them you right. know yeah their parents are basically like if kids have smartphones their parents are saying we trust our kid to have this smartphone and to use it in the ways that it could possibly be used 
Right. You know, like if you give your kid a switch, you're not condoning everything that may happen on the internet. You're condoning what may happen on that device. Mm -hmm. Give them a smartphone. You're condoning what may happen on that device. You prevent people from having a smartphone, but you still give them a switch. You're saying, Hey, I don't want you talking to a whole bunch of random strangers, but you can still play games and have fun. Right. So that that's, that's following suit with good parenting. I think anyway, good job. Nintendo is what I wanted to say with that. Yeah, that's a that's a win. Also, uh, I want to point out the fact that that like popped up at like six p.m. today. Yeah. yeah, freaking whatever. What are you What are you doing, Nintendo? They're just clearing stuff out of the way for their very awesome E three presentation. They're just getting all the weird little technicalities and multiple slide things. You know, like with a bunch of explanations. They're just getting it all out there beforehand. I think I hope I hope you're right because like if I see another arms trailer I'm going to be like no, arms okay, is coming guys. out I know it's coming out a day after or two days Three after days. it comes out so, yeah. so like I just I don't think they they don't just You know what we're going to see from arms in that tra- in that that spotlight Colin? What's that? Amiibo. Um I'm still on it. It's happening. I don't think so. It's cuz like I know. They, so here's the thing. Yeah. I think you're right. But I don't think it's going to be like an arms line of amiibo. This goes into one of my predictions. Okay. Right. Uh, Smash Brothers 4 Deluxe will be announced. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They will be including the Squid Kids. Yep. And Spring Man and Ribbon Girl. And they okay. will make a Smash Brothers Spring Man and Ribbon Girl amiibo. So it won't be like an arms themed amiibo. It will be a Smash Brothers. Sure. But amiibo. those amiibo, because everything is uh, circular with amiibo. Those arms amiibo for the Smash Brothers games will also unlock stuff in the arms game. Yeah, and that's how they will position it. I'm I'm curious to see if like they like have mockups already, but they are worried about about releasing them. Worried that they're not going to sell. Like because they they keep saying that they have like free DLC that's going to be supported for a long time to come. They showed off and- Splatoon amiibo when the, like, before that game came out when nobody was really certain about that game. I think Splatoon had a different type of enthusiasm around it than mm. Arms did. I think mm. after the test punch, people are like, "Oh yeah, I'm on board now." Yeah, because that game is just not like watching people play it is just not exciting to me. Like yeah. actually sitting down and playing it myself, I'm like, I immediately get it. I immediately get why you should be excited about this game. I'm gonna buy it day one. But for the longest time, I'm just like, this is just super boring. Like this well, is not you look fun. Interested in watching people play Splatoon? Yeah, I was more interested because it was so fast-paced. Mm, okay. Like, ARMS is a lot more... Like, it's still fast, but it's a little bit slower because you're just watching... For the longest time, they only showed one-on-one the entire time. Yeah. And they didn't show the other game type, so it's just like, okay, it's just... Sure, I get that. Bas- basically a weird version of Punch-Out. <laughs> oh, God. Can I get a new Punch-Out, please? I get. I bet we'll get uh, Punch-Out skins in ARMS. Oh, Little Mac. Don't Little tease Mac. me, Colin. Don't tease Little me. Little Mac Amiibo. Scan that right in. Oh, man. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, let's see. What do I, I think we're getting a whole bunch of new Amiibo. Yes. Yeah, I, I have a lot of Amiibos in my prediction. Yeah. Uh, one of them is, I think they're going to come out with a Mario Odyssey uh, Collector's Edition that will be bundled with a Mario Eyeball Hat Amiibo. Hmm. Okay. Um, but it'd also be sold separately, Simil- um, similar sure. to the Yarn Yoshi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that we will see uh, Rabbids Amiibo. Yep. Dressed as the Mario characters. Yes. We're going to get a Princess Peach Rabbid selfie taken Amiibo. It's going to be so stupid and so great. It'll be the worst. Of, it'll be worse than my Waluigi Amiibo for sure. <laughs> but you won't be able to not buy them. No, I have to. Like <laughs> it, there, it's not even a question. They're dumb rabbits, and it's so funny. The rabbits are great. That's the thing. Is like I don't hate on the rabbits. No, it's just so dumb. Yeah, yeah. So so dumb. I agree. Um, I think they'll have a ukulele Amiibo too. Man, you are stuck on that, aren't you? I really want that <laughs> so much. I just want it. Oh, just let calling. other third parties do it, please. They did. Let's, let's do it. Yacht clubs? I know. I said other third parties. Oh, okay. Um, I also think they're going to come out with 
a uh, Luigi Mansion Switch game, but Ooh. also a new Luigi with the vacuum. Oh, yes, please. Yes. I would love a new Luigi's Mansion. I think it's time. The yeah. 3DS game came out like three, four years ago, and it sold well, so I think it's time to, to release a new Luigi Mansion. Yep. Um, Smash Bros. Ultimate, like with these, like what you said, with added characters. Um, also, Mario Maker and Captain Toad uh, are all going to be coming to the Switch. Yeah, There'll see, I thought about... versions of all of them, but yeah. I thought about that. Like, I thought about maybe they'll do, like, a montage of all the deluxe versions of the games that are coming out. Yep. I think that would be really smart. Yeah. And I think those are, like, the biggest games that they could put on the Switch to satisfy people that could possibly um, anchor future versions of the games. Yeah. Whereas, like, it would be stupid to put, like, a Star Fox deluxe edition out or you know other other games that they put out like the kirby and the rainbow curse or anything like unnecessary but Mm -hmm. like those are like the biggest heavy hitters from the wii u library yeah captain toad nobody not enough people played captain toad and not enough people know how amazing that game is and it's perfect on the switch yeah, as I was to say, it's like the perfect portable game too. Like that's such an that's such, such a thing that you can just pick up, play a level, and then put it down. Pick up, play a level, put it down, type of thing. Yeah, and that might come with like a new Captain Toad. Like, and it might be like a bundle package or something like that. You know, like hey, you didn't pick. Maybe it's like Captain Toadette. You know, or oh please, you know, in two yes. different games, and yeah, like just they can have fun with that. And th- that game isn't taking them long to develop. You know. Yeah, no, I yeah. wouldn't. It's pretty self-contained. Um, what do you think about Virtual Console? Do you think they'll touch on that at all? Not do you think it'll be like an no. after, no. after press conference yeah. talk? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Uh, here's one. Yeah. I think they'll announce a new 2D Metroid game. I have on my list no Metroid. Oh. But just to rile some feathers, a new Donkey Kong game will be teased. Ugh. Ugh. I don't <laughs> think that they have confidence in Metroid for whatever reason, man. I want them to. I want them to as bad as anybody. I just... They seem so trigger shy on it. If they make a 2D Metroid, though, it's way less of an investment. That's why I, I think they're going to do 2D. I think they give that to somebody else. They give it to, like, Yacht Club or, you know... Uh, I, I, wa- I want it, Colin. I just... I'm not confident that they're going to do it. That would be a big showstopper. At least for the core fans. Yeah. Maybe not for everyone else, but the core fans. But I think Donkey Kong plays to the mass media a little bit more. The general public. Ugh. I know. Tropical Freeze. Underappreciated. I could see that deluxe version of Tropical Freeze coming out. Uh, I don't think it'll be Tropical Freeze. I'll be, I will be. think it'll be something else. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We'll see. We shall see. And it might not even be a full thing. It might be just the logo. It might be you just hear, you know, the conga drums in the background or something like that, you know, and it's just like, oh, Donkey Kong's at it again somewhere. Mm. We'll see. I think that they will sh- unveil the Animal Crossing mobile game. Uh huh. Um, and they will briefly tease the Switch Animal Crossing game at the end to not piss off the fans. Yeah, I, I have a little bit more than that. I said Animal Crossing for the Switch is officially announced, and the mobile game um, that's in development will sync and be compatible with this. Switch game. That would be a showstopper. Yeah. Like, that would be such a big deal for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it would be this year, though, or do you think it's going to be next year? I think it's, uh, th- that's their holiday game. But what about Mario? I think they pushed Mario to early 2018. Oh, no, don't say that. I know. I don't want it to, Colin, but I think it slides into the position of where Zelda was this year. 
they will not release a Mario game unless it is 100% polished. That's true. A game like Arms or Splatoon or Animal Crossing where they could push updates to and they could fine tune it in the background and put more content out because people are playing it on a regular they are okay with. They 100% will never put out a Mario game that is not finished. I read somewhere that it was like basically done by the time the Switch came out. Yeah, I know, but they I want them to delay it if they need the time. They they will me, polish every speck of pixels in that game to perfection before they dare put it out. And if it if they are not 100% confident that that game is the best it could possibly be, they are not going to promise a release date. I think it's still in. By a couple months. It's only a few months. Oof. Speaking of Mario Odyssey, I think Mario Odyssey will have a multiplayer component. How so? I think that it will give you the option, if you want to, to run around with one other person. So you could have uh, Luigi running around with Mario in New Donk City. <laughs> okay. What uh, if they implemented the next Mario Party game inside Mario Odyssey? So, like, Mario Inception, basically? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, please. Like, Mario is playing a game of Mario Party with his buddies, and then you actually get to play Mario Party oh my gosh. while playing as Mario, oh my gosh. playing Mario. Oh, my gosh. Right? Can we do that? Can we just, like, can we buy expansions that's, like, Mario Party and Mario Golf, and, like, you just have to walk to the area and just, yeah. like, do those activities? Right? Holy crap. Like, what if, like, Mario Odyssey becomes, like, a Mario hub world for other Mario spinoff games? That'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Oh, man. Think, All right. Think big with Mario. I would love that. Um... I think there's going to be a new Switch Kirby game announced, and I think it's going to be a new Dreamland entry, kind of how they did Return to Dreamland on Wii at okay. the very end. Okay, okay. I think it'll be like the classic Kirby That's safe. style game. Yeah. That's safe. Um, I think they'll spend no more than three minutes on 3DS games. Yeah. They will get through them quick. And try to mask them with um, with different announcements before and after. They will not neglect them. They will put them in there for the few people that will be excited. But it's not going to be much. Yeah, I could see a brief Monster Hunter tease, like just like, oh, it's coming out for three. It's coming out for Switch and also 3DS. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Mm. Uh, I think those Platoon Joy-Cons that got announced in Japan will show up somewhere. Oh, definitely. definitely. I don't know if it'll be in the in the conference, but it'll definitely be out. It'll maybe be like a post thing, like, you know, pre Splatoon 2, and also we're bringing the Splatoon Joy-Cons to the U.S. type of thing. Right, right, right. So. Hmm. What else? What else? What else? Um... I think that's all I had for Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple more. Okay. I think Pikmin 4 will be announced. Hmm. Okay. Um, and I also think it'll have a multiplayer component. Sure. Um, probably only online, though. I don't think... I don't know how you would do that well right. in, in a single player, but who knows. Uh, and then my bombshell... Well, it's not really a bombshell. But, uh, I think there is going to be a Pokemon game. I, I think it's going to be like a spinoff. I don't think it's going to be like... I don't think it's going to be Pokemon Stars, which is what everybody's wanting and hoping yeah. for. Yeah. Um, I think they are finally going to release Pokemon Snap 2. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I, was I, feel, I forgot to put it on my list. I feel like that game was 
probably in development for Wii U, and probably towards the end when they it was close to being announced, they're like, "Well, the new console's coming out. It's going to be similar to Wii U, so just port it over there." Yeah, hold it. What if somehow, some way, there is some sort of syncing um, compatibility with Pokemon Go? Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, I don't. What What do you think that would be, though? What if? Okay, hear me out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like Pokemon Snap too. Like, I think it needs to happen on the Switch. Like, it's stupid that it's not already on the Switch. However, there's another Pokemon spinoff game, Pokemon Stadium. Oh yeah. So what if you catch Pokemon in the wild? And then you could transport them to your Switch Pokemon Stadium, oh, train so them, cool. and then battle online. That would be so cool. I would love that. Because in like you're actually battling with Pokemon that you have caught out in your everyday life. Yeah. Uh, I would love that. And Pokemon Stadium for the 64, like, it was fun to do that with, you know, your Game Boy, and then you could you know, insert the cartridge and have the, the, the Pokemon show up in the game. Yeah. Um, but if they make a Pokemon stadium like that, that portion of it sounds exciting with Pokemon go, but I really hope they have the mini games because the mini games right. in Pokemon stadium, I played more than I think any game on the 64. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just think how cool that would be. Like, you know, oh, so to cool. like have that integrated, you know, to, it keeps Pokemon Go relevant, which Nintendo has a vested interest in. Um, but then it also, like, gets, you know, more excitement onto the Switch as well. Like, it, it it's a partnership that, that works well for Nintendo in every way, shape, or form. Right. It would be awesome. Oh, my gosh. That would be so cool. Yeah. It's yeah. a great idea. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You should work for Nintendo, Josh. I know. You know, I, I've thought about that, Colin, but then you and I wouldn't be able to podcast anymore because they have pretty strict regulations about their employees, like going on podcasts and stuff and doing side projects. So I would hate to leave you, Colin. I see. That's yeah. fair. I appreciate that. Yeah. Sacrifices have to be made. You know, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> Just giving up my hopes and dreams for the sake of you and this podcast. No big deal. <laughs> Um, yeah, Nintendo. I I think they could do so many awesome things. And, like, even if, like, just a couple of these things, like, actually happen, like, say they have, like, a fairly low-key E3, which I don't expect them to because they're all hands on deck with Switch hype. Mm -hmm. Uh, But even if they have, like, a fairly low-key E3, like, it could still be pretty exciting because everything that they're doing is working right now. Yeah, there's there hasn't been anything besides maybe the accessory prices of the Switch. There really yeah. hasn't been anything negative about Nintendo. But people okay. like overlook that like so quickly because they're putting out good games. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, it's they still a- sold through. Like they sold out everywhere for the longest time. You couldn't yeah. find Joy Cons or Pro Controllers anywhere. Yeah. So I still can't really find make another no set difference. of neons. What's that? I still can't find another set of neons. Yeah, I haven't seen those in stock anywhere. They're just the grays. Yeah. Hmm. Sucks. So, who do you think is... I know us, per, like, Nintendo fanboys aside, who do you think is going to do the best at E3, conference-wise? I mean... Nintendo will be strong. It, it's weird to, like compare Nintendo to the other ones because they have such a polished um, pre-recorded video, you know, that they push out Mm -hmm. where, like, the production value alone is, like, leaps and bounds above anything else that anybody else is doing at their conferences. Um, Like, it would take a lot for Nintendo to, like, really mess up their spotlight and that it would include focusing on the 3DS and arms and splatoon and like nothing else yeah for them to like really fail at this i agree um so like when it comes down to like xbox and playstation like 
Xbox has like the new hardware. It has the mystery. It has the unknown, and it has the ability for like a one-two punch here. I think PlayStation is still just going to walk in on Monday night and just lay down trailer after trailer after trailer of hype and excitement and energy and buzz. And I think it's just going to be a repeat of last year. I honestly do. Where by the end of it, like you're going to come out of like the PlayStation conference and just be like, wow, what just happened? That was amazing. I need to breathe, you know? I, yeah, I, I really, I really am rooting for Microsoft. Like, I really think they need a win. Me too. Um, but I, I just don't think Sony is not going to like revert back to their old ways. Like, no, no, what no, they I did last year worked. So I don't they're... think they're going to do that. Yeah. Um, I think that both Microsoft and Sony are going to have lackluster conferences. Like, I don't think they're going to live up to the past couple of years because Microsoft, even though Sony definitely like, in my opinion, Sony had a better like hype factor to yeah. their games and stuff. Right. Microsoft still put on a really, really good show. Sure. But uh, but going into last year, right, like we were excited to see what Microsoft had because there were several games that we knew about that we were wanting to see. Right. Yeah. And we both sat there and said, not sure what Sony's going to do. Not sure what they have. This could be pretty boring. And it was the complete opposite. Like, they're just like, nah, we got this. Yeah, I mean, I would argue, though, that, like, all those games they showed aren't coming out anytime soon. It doesn't but, matter. Like, it yeah, was the excitement they got, and the buzz. It wasn't, right. you they know. Got, they got the last word, basically. With yeah. That. I, I mean, oh, Xbox man. did trailers that were more relevant to games that were potentially coming out with the, you know, exception of, like, Scalebound. Um, who they spent way too much time on. Uh oh, but, like, Sony, like, it didn't matter because at the end of it, you're just like, wow, that was an impressive showing by Sony. Right. You know. So, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how Sony does anything less than what they did last year. I think it's on Xbox to outdo them. And they have to be super impressive with what the Scorpio is. They have to be concise and impactful. You know, like, if we start spending 20 minutes talking about, like, the specs and what it could do and trying to show off how good it looks on an online stream where you can't see how good it looks, like, it's not going to work out. They have to be smart with this. And I think they can. Yeah. And I think Oculus, like, would be huge to bring that on stage. Yeah, that would be a big deal for sure. Yeah. And you know they're going to have a fancy car on stage. Of course, they always do. <laughs> so, oh man, I forgot to put down my predictions. Fourth Seven is going to get announced at the Microsoft stage. Colin, that's like predicting the sun's going to come up tomorrow. It's going to be Scorpio. I mean, this day and age, like that's even kind of a fifty-fifty at this point. But well, yeah, <laughs> at least in the United States, for sure, <laughs> it's going to come up way quicker and way closer. Um. I have a few other outlying predictions here that don't involve, like, the main companies. Yeah, go for it. Um, Bethesda New Games. Uh, they kind of tease that it would be two new games. Mm -hmm. Evil Within 2, like we said. Yep. And I think we're going to get, like, a fall off sp Fallout spinoff. Really? I think it's going to be Wolfenstein. Ooh, I forgot about that. That's possible. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. That seems more likely. I feel like Fallout needs to take a rest because of, like, the... Not negative of Fallout 4, but, like, just not nearly as much enthusiasm as I think Bethesda was wanting. It was very anticlimactic. Yeah, the like, I feel like... The hype buzz for it was incredible, and then it came out and it's like, yeah, it's another Fallout. I feel like people are talking about Skyrim still, and they're not talking about Fallout 4. <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim came out way before Fallout 4, yeah. so... Yeah. Um, Wolfenstein, though, that, that's legit. Uh, two more. EA Conference is going to be long and boring once again, uh, but Battlefront is going to look amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to wait until the very end, have Pele talk for 12 hours. <laughs> also, Ubisoft Conference is going to be super weird, but Far Cry 5 is going to look awesome. 
so excited. Yeah. Please let there be a co-op mode, please. No, they said. They said there was a co-op mode? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you could co-op the entire game. No. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. You didn't know that? I gotta go to the times. Yeah. When I heard that, I was like, oh, that's exactly what Colin wanted. That is. I'm buying that. Day one. Yep. I'm in. Because, you know, you could pick your protagonist. Right. You can pick a male or female. Yeah. And skin tone and everything. Right. Which is awesome. Um, Let's see here. Yeah. uh, Polygon. Far Cry 5's campaign is playable entirely in co-op. Oh, yes. 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 Players will be able to team up and take on the game's campaign in cooperative play. It will be possible to play through the entire campaign in online, not local, co-op. Um, it's unclear if both players will be playing as the same character. While Far Cry 5 allows you to choose a player's gender and skin tone, we don't know if there's a full-on character creator. That's so rad. Yeah. Oh, man, so cool. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, yep, 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 yep. So now you're in? Oh, I'm in. Sweet. Yeah, 100%. We'll definitely co-op that game in. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for E3 predictions. You have anything else, Colin? No, I don't think so. Um... I think maybe okay, one one weird prediction. Okay. One last weird one. Okay. I think we're gonna see and I don't know who it's gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna be Microsoft or it's gonna be Sony, but I think we will see a new live action series or like T V series or a new live action movie for one of their IPs. Interesting. Um I because t- supposedly that halo show is still happening on microsoft's end and sony's been like doing all sorts of weird stuff with their ips like the uncharted movie and the last of us and like i i don't know i just feel like i feel like that'd be i feel like it'd be a bad move on their part but i feel like one of them may do that hmm okay okay to expand their ip hmm i have one last one okay we will learn what the next Rocksteady game is. Oh, Rocksteady. That's right. Yeah, Arkham Knight's been two years, yeah? Mm-hmm. Ooh. You think it's a Justice League game? No. Okay. No. Do you think it's a DC game at all? I think it's possible. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Totally forgot about them. They're doing something. For sure. Yeah. I mean, they threw together that Arkham VR game pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, They're doing something. And I don't know which stage that they show up on, but it will be... You know, I I wouldn't be surprised if it's Sony. Yeah, they've had relationships Mm -hmm. with them in the past. Yeah. Well... We'll see uh, in about a week and a half how right we are, which, you know, I'm pretty confident that we're pretty uh, right on with all of these things. Yeah, especially the ukulele amiibo. That's 100% happening. I want it to for your sake, Colin. <laughs> I want that, and I want a Toadette amiibo, and I can die happy. Yeah, Captain Toad with a Toad and Toadette amiibo? I just want Toadette. I don't care about Captain Toad. It's a it's a partner deal. You get one you can't have one without the other, Colin. All right, that's fine. As All long right. as I get some form of Toadette. Definitely. You have to buy Captain Toad in order to get Toadette. That's fine. Okay. I I can do that. All right. Um, Colin, where can the people find you online to uh, congratulate you on all of your awesome predictions? Um, I am at PDX underscore Geek on Twitter. On Twitter. That's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the noise with a Y. Uh, you can also follow the show on Twitter at Joys of Games. And uh, I'm not sure if we'll do an episode next week. Next week would be Nintendo. We'll probably do an episode. Yeah, we'll probably do an episode. Probably. Yeah, 
we might do like a bonus episode um, after everything with E3 happens and kind of like recap things, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll try to do that because it would be several weeks before we get to the et cetera episode. So yeah, um, we'll try to do something. We'll uh, we'll do something uh, related to E3 when it happens. Um, but next week we'll be talking about Nintendo, something fun, I'm sure. Maybe Magic Heart Jump. <laughs> yeah. Are you playing that? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty stupid. Yeah, it is in the best possible way. Oh yeah. Okay. Have you had a Magic Heart eaten by a Pidgeot yet? Not yet. That's horrific. I don't even want to imagine that. No, you shouldn't. Um, anyway, this has been fun. Um, we'll see you all next week. Uh, go out there, play some games. Enjoy them. Good night. Good night. <laughs>